welcome to this, our celebration of the Holy Mass for the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm Monsignor Michael Champ, pastor and bishop of the Old Catholic Church of Antioch in Tucson. Welcome. We begin with our opening hymn, The Cry of the Poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Blessed be the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, with praise ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord, who will hear the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Blessed be the Lord. Let the Lord hear and be glad. The Lord listens to their pleas, and to hearts broken God is near, who will hear the cry of the poor. Every spirit crushed God will save, will be ransomed for their lives, will be safe shelter for their fears, and will hear the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Blessed be the Lord. Our entrance antiphon this morning comes to us from Psalm 104. Let hearts rejoice in the Lord and keep a festival in honor of all the saints. Let us join with the angels in joyful praise to the Son of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And so let us begin as we always do, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In order to celebrate our sacred mystery today, let us first call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you have told us to pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you listen to our prayers. Christ, have mercy. In our deepest despair, we know that we can communicate with God through prayer. Lord, have mercy. In Adam's sin, the gates of heaven were closed. We were made one with God and heirs of the kingdom of heaven in our baptism. We are thankful for our redemption. We, Almighty God, forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us now begin the liturgy of the Word. Let us pray today in humble hope for salvation. Praise be to you, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no power for good which is, does not come from your covenant, and no promise in which to hope that your love has not offered. Strengthen our faith to accept your promises and give us the love to carry out your commands. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In our first reading today, we hear that a regular life of prayer and worship is more difficult when we get our share of life's troubles than when the sun is shining in our lives. Nevertheless, praying makes human beings great at the very moment that they confess their insignificance before him. Hear now these words from the Old Testament book of Sirach. The Lord is a God of justice who knows no favorites. Though not unduly partial toward the weak, he hears the cry of the oppressed. The Lord is not deaf to the wail of the orphan nor to the widow when she pours out her complaint. He who serves God willingly is heard. His petition reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds. It does not rest until it reaches its goal, nor will it withdraw till the Most High responds, judges justly, and affirms the right, and the Lord will not delay. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Our response today from Psalm 34. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Join me. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and to those who are cursed in spirit he saves. The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. In our second reading today, we hear that Paul is in jail once again, feeling that his end is drawing near. He feels lonesome as he writes to his disciple Timothy, but his faith in God is his strength. God's word to us through this tradition is that we also can find strength in prayer. Listen now to Paul's words to Tiffany, to Timothy. Beloved, I am greatly being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have complete, competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat, and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now prepare for the reading of the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Join me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of salvation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may really proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading of the holy gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer. O oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice weekly, and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Later, people were even bringing infants to him that he might touch them. When the disciples saw them, they rebuked them. But Jesus, however, called the children to himself, saying, Let the children come to me, and do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whatever, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God with childlike innocence will not enter it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Those who humble themselves will be exalted. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our blessed Lord gave an example today in our gospel reading that we should heed. And that is that we should not boast of our righteousness. We should not take great honor among others for those things that we do correctly. We should do things correctly because they are the right things to do. This is often difficult, especially for youngsters growing up. And so if the wise parent is concerned that their children will have good sense, then they will tell them not to take great pleasure in doing the right thing, but rather do the right thing for its own sake. This is a very difficult lesson. Many, many adults have yet to learn it. The Pharisee today in our gospel was a righteous man. He tells of the fact that he does not take advantage of others, he does not uh, commit great sin, but he was boasting about his righteousness, and this is where the problem comes in. None of the things that he did to become an honorable man were in question. In fact, they were the things that you should do as honorable people. You should not commit grievous sin. You should not take advantage of others. But rather, you should give yourself in humble piety to the service of those around you, your loved ones, surely, and then to your neighbors and to those in need. For this is the great gift that we have. We understand that in order to become a member of God's saintly kingdom in heaven, we must first become saintly. This is a very difficult thing to accomplish. And when we read the lives of the saints, we see that many of them suffered privations well throughout their life. Many were martyred to the cause of righteousness. But their key element was that they did not boast of their righteousness. Rather, they gave of themselves fully and honorably for the welfare of all those with whom they came in contact. This is our great goal. And we will pour ourselves out in humble service to those around us. Again, to our loved ones, our acquaintances, and then to those in need whom we do not know, just because they are in need. This is the example that our blessed Lord Jesus gave us. God love you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, let us join together now and profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, one in being to the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures, and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. May the mystery of the mingling of this water and wine help us to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Wash my hands among the innocents and accomplish your altar, O Lord, that I might hear the voice of your praise and tell of all your wondrous works. I've loved, O Lord, the beauty of your house, the place where your glory dwells. Take not away my soul, O God, from the wicked, nor my life with men of blood, in whose hands are iniquities and filled with gifts. But as for me, I have walked in my innocence. Redeem me and have mercy on me. In the churches I will bless you, O Lord. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my guilt. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and that of all his church. Lord God of power and might, we pray that you receive the gifts we offer and let our service give you glory. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do all, we always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Father, we acknowledge your greatness. All your actions show your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own likeness and set us over the whole world to serve you, our creator, and rule over all creatures. Even when we disobeyed you and lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the power of death, but helped us all to seek and find you. Again and again, you offered us a covenant and, through the prophets, taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you so loved the world that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. He was conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, a man like us in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to those in sorrow joy. In fulfillment of your will, he gave himself up to death. But by rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as his first gift to those who believe, to complete his work on earth and bring us the fullness of grace. Father, may this Holy Spirit sanctify these offerings. Let them become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ as we celebrate the great mystery which he left us as an everlasting covenant. He always loved those who were his own in this world. When the time came for him to be glorified by you as Heavenly Father, <clears throat> he showed the depth of his love. While they were at supper, he took bread into his sacred hands, and looking up to you as Heavenly Father, he gave you thanks and praise. 
He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup filled with wine. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink of it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We recall Christ's death, his descent among the dead, his resurrection, and his ascension to your right hand. And looking forward to his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice which brings salvation to the whole world. Lord, look upon this sacrifice you have given to your church, and by your Holy Spirit gather all who share this one bread and one cup, into the one mystical body of Christ, a living sacrifice of praise. Lord, remember those who, for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially our religious leaders and patriarchs. Bernd, our patriarch in Utrecht, Francis, Bishop of Rome, for me, your humble servant, and for bishops and clergy everywhere. Remember those who take part in this offering and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Father, in your mercy, grant also to us, your children, to enter into our heavenly inheritance in the company of the Virgin Mary and your apostles and saints. Then in your kingdom, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we shall sing your glory with every creature through Christ our Lord, through whom you give us everything that is good. <clears throat> through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Well, let's join together now and pray to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and sheltered from all needless anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope. For the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but the faith of our church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with us always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to those who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Domini Nostri, Jesu Christi, Custodia Anima, Meam, in Vitam Eternam, Amen. Amen. 
Sanguis Domini nostri Jesu Christi, custodiat anima meam, in vitam eternam, amen.
we will rejoice at the victory of God <clears throat> and make our blood as glorious as his own name. Let us pray. Lord, bring to perfection within us the communion that we share in this sacrament. May our celebration have an effect in our lives. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God keep you from all harm and bless you with every good gift. May he set his word in your heart and fill you with lasting joy. May you walk in his ways, always knowing what is right and good until you enter your heavenly inheritance. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharistic sacrament has ended for today. Let us go forth from this place and serve the Lord and each other. Our closing hymn, Blessed by Your Sacrifice. Blessed by your sacrifice, strong in your love, O Christ, our grateful voices to you we raise. True adoration throughout creation rings out in joyful songs of praise. O splendor, glory bright, brought forth as light from light, O day, O days, enlightening. Angels with one accord cry, Holy, Holy Lord, to you, our everlasting King. Come, raise the anthem high, let praises fill the sky, sing out a new song unto the Lord. Let all with heart and voice before the throne rejoice of him whom heaven and earth adore. God love you all, and thank you for being with us today.